Hey guys, welcome back. This is Eaton4768 bringing you the second part to my fifth tutorial on in Kerbal Space Program, and this is how to build a space plane. And in the second part, uh, I'm going to show you how to get this back to the Kerbal Space Center safe and sound. Now, in the last part of this tutorial, we built this space plane and got it into orbit with plenty of fuel to spare, which I'm really surprised about how much we've got left. So that's going to give us plenty of breathing space in order to get us back to the Kerbal Space Center. Now, one of the main things we're going to have to do is just deorbit this plane. And the way to deorbit a plane, like I've shown you in previous videos, is just by slowing it down. Um, and we want to make sure that we intercept the Kerbal Space Center. So if you press M and look at Kerbin on your map, you need to know where the Kerbal Space Center is. Now if you look at this uh, piece of land here, which looks pretty much identical to Africa, um, you'll see here that it's got, on the sort of southeastern tip, it's got a, a quite a brightly coloured, uh, well, a much lighter colour than the rest segment on the right hand side. And this is, that is the Kerbal Space Centre because these islands here, the runway is just here for the, uh, the, the other runway which you can use to test out planes. So this, this um, lightly coloured spec here is the Kerbal Space Centre and this is what you want to aim for. And you want to particularly aim for your orbits to finish around about here because when you enter the atmosphere it's going to slow you down, send you up about here so you can glide back onto the runway. So thankfully our orbit's quite central, so we I won't have to make any movements up or sort of um, navigating uh, the degree of which my orbit is, I just need to slow it down. I'm going to aim to slow it down about here, because that's going to give us plenty of time to slow down and change our orbit. So I'm just going to speed up time. You might want to make, if the KSC isn't uh, in the daylight isn't in the daylight part, you might want to change that by just time warping for a amount of time. For a short time. So we're actually going to do it here just to give myself some breathing space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my ship and thankfully we're already at the retrograde marker. Now if you remember this is where our velocity is the opposite direction of which our velocity is heading. So I'm just going to make sure that these are in closed cycle which is a rocket engines and I'm all I'm going to do is thrust up to slow us down. I'm just going to watch our orbit change and press X when it gets to my desired place which is there there we are so as you can see this is actually slightly above the Kerbal Space Center but that's not a problem that's a good place where we need to be so I'm just going to press F5 to quick save just in case we run into any problems and at this point I'm just going to spin us round I'm going to press 2 to change these back to air breathing because that's we don't need to use our rocket engines anymore and then, uh, let me see if... Oh, I've still left the air intakes on and never turned them off. I should have done that. That was bad practice by, on my half. But So, one thing you need to remember when entering orbit is that you need to make sure that you... It can be very easy sometimes in a space plane when you're re-entering orbit to... Sorry, re-entering the atmosphere to spin out because you're going very quickly into a very thick thing um, atmosphere which can, if you're... If you don't know how to control it properly, it can make your, cause your aircraft to spin out. So what I always tend to do is, some people say you've got to follow on this, uh, just directly on the horizon. I don't think that's quite true. I think you need to follow your direction. So I think you need to stay on your prograde marker as to where your velocity is heading. Because then, when you start pitching down, when you start falling downwards, your nose will follow that. And it will, sort of like a nice little, sort of, um, kind of like a pin through a water. It's very smooth. So... Hopefully this might, I've never tried getting this design back into uh, the atmosphere yet, so this could go horribly wrong, uh, but hopefully, <laughs> for your and my sakes, I'm hoping that this goes well. Uh, so, now that we're coming closer into the atmosphere, I'm just going to time warp just this first bit of the journey, and immediately we can't actually time warp when we get into the atmosphere. Um, so you'll see actually that my prograde mark has dropped slightly, so I'm just going to make sure that we stay on that on the nav ball. And, yeah, well, this part of the journey is pretty self-explanatory. We've still got quite a distance to go yet. Um, as you can see, our, already our orbit has dropped quite significantly. I think I might have to um, do some... I think I might have overestimated about where I might end up, because I think I end up at these mountains here, so I might have to fly a bit more to get to the Kerbal Space Centre. But that's not a problem. We've kept ourselves plenty of fuel, and this uh, plane is very flyable, so... That's not going to be a problem. 
That's one of the things you really want to make sure when you're designing a space plane is that it's very versatile and very sort of, um, what's the word for it? Uh, very adaptable. It can adapt to very different situations because if you have a plane that can only sort of glide down to the Kerbal Space Center, it can't fly back and it's, you know, you start, it really can st start causing problems. So if you have a design that's very, very adaptable, you then gives you a lot of other options as to what you can do with it. Because then I could then build on this now, I could make it longer and add a cargo bay in the middle. I could use this as a refueling craft, I could use this as a, um, put some more spaces on for ke uh, Kerbals, and I can take them up to a space station maybe I have in orbit. You know, as long as you've got a versatile platform as a, for a space plane, you can really then expand it to do whatever you'd like. So, as we are now coming in, we're hitting 35,000 meters, meters, so we should start to see some re-entry effects very soon, because our speed is starting to decrease. We haven't spun out yet, which is a good sign. Ah, here we go. And that's just basically showing us slowing down very rapidly. Have a screenshot for the thumbnail. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some flying to get us to the space center. Actually, this craft is very stable at re-entering the atmosphere. I'm very pleased with how this, how this has worked out. What I'm actually going to do is, I'm just going to keep angle this up slightly, just to try and maintain as much speed of this as we can, just to get to the space center, because it saves us using our engines. You know, why use the engines when we can just use the kinetic energy that we've gained from getting up into the, uh, getting into space anyway. So I'm going to try and pitch up, try and maintain altitude very slightly. You can see our vertical indicator is thinking about pitching upwards again. I'm gonna turn our engine turn my engines onto half thrust. So then we have a bit of forward momentum to work with. So we're now back in the atmosphere so we can use our air breathing engines which require little to no fuel. So as you can see the Kerbal Space Center is here on this the coloured ground to the rest of the um, surrounding area so we want to sort of do adjustments as early as possible so I'm just going to roll right and pitch upwards to turn us slightly traveling at 434 meters per second so we're gonna have to slow down quite dramatically before we land because this is far too quick to land on um, but this is good for us, you know, getting us to back to the Kerbal Space Center as promptly as possible. Because we don't want to be hanging around at this part of the journey. This is it's probably it's probably one of the more exciting bits, but um, Thankfully I had quite pl I had plenty of fuel on this uh, space plane, but I have had times in which I've been returning our space plane to back to the Kerbal Space Center with not a single drop of fuel left. So um, I had a sort of uh, I really needed to make sure that I uh, had to just only glide it back onto the runway, which I've had to do sometimes, and sometimes it's gone right, sometimes it's gone wrong, you know, uh, experience um, is what will help you in that respect, but you know, pro trial and error really is, in, uh, is what this game's mostly about, trying different things, if they work, yay, if they don't, try, learn from them, and try again with a different design. I'm very pleased actually that this design's worked out as well as it, as well as it, uh, as it has. Nearing the Kerbal Space Center now. We're still okay to decrease altitude because we don't want to be too high when we get there and have to make a sudden, uh, sudden uh, drop downwards. As you can see now, we can we can actually see the Kerbal Space Center dead ahead. And you can see that, I don't know if you guys can see it on yours, but there's a white line just heading up that way. That's the airstrip. So we want to make sure that we align ourselves correctly with that.
anyone's ever played Microsoft Flight Simulator, this feels very... This feels like a bit like deja vu. <laughs> so now that we're level with it, we want to turn to face Kerbal Space Center. One thing to do actually is to get a little probe and put it next to the runway so that you can set that as a target and it will actually show up on your nav ball so you can line up precisely the runway but I think, judging by it, pretty much dead on here. And we're coming down at a nice descent. I'm still keeping my engines at half throttle just to get us there quicker. We have, to, we have more than enough fuel so that's a problem. Sometimes if you have really huge crafts, you might have to win parachutes to slow them down and far fast enough. It's not usually the case because, you know, uh, the atmosphere is quite thick in Kerbin. It's only places with a thinner atmosphere, such as Duna, that you might... Uh, sorry, Duna, I should say. Look at Jeff. He's loving life. <laughs> um, yes, uh, planets like Duna that have uh, a quite a thin atmosphere, you'll need some parachutes in order to slow you down just enough so that you're able to land safely. Um, I know I'm blabbering on guys, but this bit really isn't that much of a very fun part of the journey. Uh, it's my fault because I slowed us down too early in the orbit, but hey, as long as we get down on the runway in one piece, that's all that matters because we want to get Jeb home. He's had a long, hard trip. This mission's... it's only been a 45 minute mission, which is not too bad at all. Really? Four and forty-five minutes? Looks like it's been longer than that. Sometimes if you go to somewhere like Elu, missions can take years. <laughs> Not real life obviously, but uh a little space program life. Okay, so as we're nearing the runway, I'm gonna start I'm gonna decrease my throttle down to a quarter and I'm going to press G to deploy the landing gear. Because wheels always help when you're landing. <laughs> Our speeds go probably going to decrease quite dramatically because we've increased the drag from the wheels and decreased the thrust. So I'm looking to keep the speed between 60 meters per second and 100. We don't really want to get to 60 because that is sort of verging on the um, verging on stalling the uh, aircraft. But we don't want it too high because at the minute we're going a bit fast to land because otherwise, you know, might uh, probably won't come off the end of the runway. But just to be safe. As soon as we, because we're currently decrease, uh, decreasing altitude, so as soon as we start leveling out, our um, the wheels are actually spinning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we start leveling out, the speed should decrease fairly quickly. This is also one reason why you've got to make sure that your aircraft has enough lift, because if the aircraft had very little lift, then actually this wouldn't really be possible. We'd be falling more downwards than forwards at such a low speed. So you want to make sure that you've got plenty of lift, the amount of mass that you have on your aircraft, which is why these two sets of swept rings, rings? wings are absolutely ideal. Coming in now at about 93 meters per second. We want to press X just to get rid of all the throttle need any more throttle now, we just want to decrease speed. Because um, we're coming in quite high, so we want to drop altitude. Now we're coming in at 60 meters per second. We're actually coming in quite high. Which is not, it's not too much of a problem, still, as long as we can level out again. So, as we get towards the runway, we're on top of the runway, we want to try and pull up just before we hit the floor, so then we decrease the weight pressed on. So we're going to level out, back wheels touch, and the front. There we are, perfect. Just going to taxi down the runway. Just dab the brakes to slow us down. Going to use the A and D keys to try and taxi ourselves back towards the hangar. Uh, 
And there we are. So we're just going to hold the brakes and stop ourselves there. And there we have it, guys. That is how to get a space plane back from orbit. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe for more Kerbal Space Program videos. Uh, please also leave any comments for tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Um, currently open to ideas. I think the next tutorial I'm going to be do going to do is how to get to Minimus. So please stay tuned for that one. Thanks, guys. Cheers.